Hi everybody, I'm Sarah from Teach Me GIS, and today I'm going to show you how to recreate a map that I made for Teach Me GIS for monitoring Hurricane Laura and Tropical Storm Marco this past week. Um, and I did this with layers that all came from the National Weather Service, and specifically these were um, service layers, which means that um, they're coming from the internet, which means that um, anytime there's an update to the data, I don't have to go out and re-download a new shapefile. The data just updates within my map, um, which made uh, keeping track of all of that um, a lot easier. And so here's the URL up here for where the National Weather Service keeps all of this stuff. Um, and specifically down here, um, we have a section for hurricanes and tropical storms. And I was using the Atlantic hurricane forecast because uh, we're in Houston and we're watching um, storms that come in from the Atlantic to the Gulf of Mexico and the Caribbean. Um, but there's nothing really going on in the Atlantic at the moment now that Laura has fizzled out. So what I'm actually gonna show you is the Eastern Pacific because there's stuff going on there, um, but all the layers are exactly the same. So I'm going to click on that and it takes us to the metadata page so you can take a read through that and it will show you all of the layers that are included in that server so you can take a look at that as well but specifically up here at the top is what you want to actually get this stuff into pro so if you want some really quick already symbolized layers you don't care much about what they look like you just want to get some stuff on a map quickly you want this WMS web map service these things will not give you access to the attribute table so you just have to sort of live with whatever symbology and labels they they come with but it's very very quick you can get some good looking layers out there very quickly but specifically why I was making this map was because some of the information that I was pretty sure was in here was not being exposed by um, the maps provided um, at the, the National Hurricane Center's website. Um, and so I actually wanted to get it in at the attribute table and provide my own symbology and my own labels. And that's what a web feature service can do for you. And so all you have to do is just right click on whichever one of these you need and say copy link and that will take the URL for that page and stick it in your clipboard. The other thing you can do, you can actually click on the link. It'll take you to this really scary looking XML page and you can copy the URL from the bar at the top. It gets the exact same text into your clipboard. It doesn't matter which way you do it. And now that's what Pro needs. So back here in Pro, this is 2.6. So if you're on a different version, um, your buttons may look slightly different than mine. What you're gonna do though, is you're gonna go to your insert tab and you're gonna to go to connections. This is how you would uh, make a connection to an SDE database or to a geo database. And we want servers. So you're gonna click on whichever one of these two you picked in the National Weather Service webpage and just do a control V and paste all of that in. Remember that you do have to remove everything after the question mark, um, all of that extra stuff from it being in a browser and hit okay. And then it adds this lovely little servers folder and catalog, and there it is right there. And you expand it, and it has all of those layers in it. So this is just a connection to a folder, essentially. It doesn't actually add anything to your map, it just connects you, and then you can drag and drop these layers onto your map as needed. So I happen to know, you would have to go in and figure out which one of these is your particular storm of interest. They're all labeled, one, two, three, four, five. Um, so I happen to know that out here near the Baja Peninsula and uh, Western Mexico, that number four is out there. Um, so what I used during uh, Hurricane Laura that was very helpful for me was obviously the forecast track and the points. So that's just a line. There's this little thing out here and I also use the forecast points and I wanted to be able to label those forecast points with the intensity and the date it was going to be there and then obviously the cone as well and again these are just coming in with default symbology you would have to go in and make these all pretty but for example the forecast points um, I actually made a layer file for those and again these are feature services so you get labeling you get your entire feature layer set up here so I can go to symbology and I can say I want to do cool things and I'm actually going to import the symbology from a layer file which is right here and I did a dual value um, dual field symbology scheme And there they are, right? So I wanted colors and I wanted the number um, of the category in there to give me some additional information. 
And then what else did I do? Let's see. Um, the forecast wind radius. This was really, really helpful. Laura was a very spread out storm and we were pretty far from it, but we wanted to know where that wind radius was gonna go. And so it gives you these little things. Again, this is a layer that is not in the National Hurricane Center's um, default uh, map images. So those were very, very helpful because again, these points represent where the center is gonna go, but that wind field can stretch a decent distance from the center of the storm. And then uh, the current wind field is, which one, the surfaced wind field. Um, that's what the storm winds look like right now. Again, that was very helpful. And then, um, of course, these watch and warning polygons. There's not going to be any in here because this thing is out over water. Um, but that will show you which areas of coastline have hurricane and tropical storm watches and warnings. Um, and so I just wanted to show you what those look like and how to bring them in. Um, and then this is the, uh, the map that I had for Laura. I used the new 2.6 capability for map graphics. Um, to just go in here and put a little point for where my house is um, so that when we work, we are, I'm over on the northwest side of Houston. I wanted to be able to look and see, okay, I can see Galveston Bay on all of the really, really zoomed out maps, but where am I really located in reference to that? And I could have created a feature class for that, but I didn't want to because I'm lazy. So um, the new capability of map graphics, this is like... Um, map annotations from ArcMap, I could just put this graphic point on here um, without having to go to the bother um, of creating a full uh, feature class to hold just that one little graphic point. And then I had um, the forecast points in here. Again, you can't see anything on the map because it's not there anymore. The track, the past track, here's those watches and warnings. Um, I symbolized the, that predicted wind radius, which is on my other map. Um, this thing right here, this predicted wind radius, um, they have that divided out by tropical storm force winds versus hurricane. Um, same thing with the current wind fields, with where the winds are right now, they have that separated out. Um, and then of course the forecast cone. And then um, those wind probabilities, I think there's still some of this left. So there's that thing that we were looking at in the other map. And there's the remnants um, of Laura that may strengthen again. Um, but again, these are divided out as well. They're separate layers. These are up here. That's these three at the very top. Um, for tropical storm force winds, um, sort of high to mid-range tropical storm force winds, which there aren't any, there's a little bit down here for this guy. And then hurricane force winds as well, which there's nothing. So those are very helpful. I also have a thing here for radar and satellite. Um, you saw the radar and the satellite on the um, National Weather Service's page. That is, there's the radar right there. And what else did I have in here? Um, here are the outlooks for other systems that might be developing, um, just to keep an eye. And I don't know if there's, oh, yep, there's something. And again, I created my own labels for these things. Um, and specifically, the labels that I wanted, I wanted to know on the forecast cone, I wanted to know which advisory that was for. I wanted to know how recent that cone was. So for example, on the cone, I can go into labeling and look at the attribute table first. There is a column in here for the date of the advisory right here. There's the date of the advisory and the number for the advisory. Um, and you can see those advisory numbers and dates on the National Hurricane Center's website. And I actually used those for my label and I used a little expression so I could have both of them because I'm greedy. So um, by default, it gives me the storm name, but that's not really what I want. So I'm gonna get rid of that. And I am going to use the advisory date and then I put in a concatenation and a new line so I could stack it. And then the advisory uh, number, and then with some text in front of it, because that's just a number. Advisory space, and then the number. So this is gonna give me the advisory date on the top line, and then advisory space, and then the number on the bottom line. Validate that, hit apply and then turn them on, right? So there we go. So that gives me a date and a time and the advisory number. Um, and that updates anytime the data updates so that I know if this is an updated data set or if it's the same thing I looked at an hour ago. 
And I could do the same thing. I was putting uh, dates and times on the storm points so I knew what day and time each of these represented. So again, by using these feature services, you have the flexibility of being able to do all of this, but also the convenience of these data layers being updated continually as the National Weather Service updates their data. So thanks for watching and um, check out all of Teach Me GIS's courses that are being offered um, remotely at this time on our website, teachmegis.com. Thanks.